Hi, I'm Christina McLean. And I'm Claire Stanhope. Welcome to All Access. Thanks for joining us today, Claire, as our guest co-host, stepping in for Lauren. Thanks for having me, Christina. I'm super excited to have this opportunity to join you today. And I know we have a really exciting guest here to talk to us about a big event in Chicago this summer. We sure do. We're going to hear from Robin Jones, who's the Accessibility Advisor to the 2024 Chicago House Committee and the Democratic National Convention Committee. Can you tell us a little bit more about Robin? Absolutely. So Robin Jones is currently serving as the Accessibility Advisor for the Chicago 2024 House Committee and the 2024 Democratic National Convention Committee, or DNCC. In this role, she is responsible for ensuring that the 2024 Democratic Convention is accessible to people with disabilities who are participating. Prior to joining the convention, Robin served as the director of the Great Lakes ADA Center and an instructor in the Department on Disability and Human Development at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Formerly, she served as director of the Progress Center for Independent Living and as an occupational therapy practitioner at the institution formerly known as the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago. She has extensive experience assisting individuals and covered entities to understand their rights and responsibilities under the Americans with Disabilities Act. Robin has served on several state and local task forces and committees related to disability policy with the goal of furthering the inclusion of people with disabilities in all aspects of society. Well, Robin, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Of course. We're excited to hear about all the work you've been up to. I just really want to start off by learning a little bit about some of the work you've done previously and how you feel it has prepared you for this really big job and, you know, just why you were interested in in serving in this role for the DNCC. I have a long history um, working in the disability community. I've been the director of the Great Lakes ADA Center since it was founded back in 1991. Prior to that, I've worked with independent living centers and you know worked as a practitioner in a you know medical field, et cetera. So I've really been um, actively engaged in the disability community and really committed to um, community participation, making sure that people had equal opportunity to participate in the community and such. So when this opportunity came along, and just to say that um, when the 2020 convention was in Milwaukee, um, which of course, you know, because of COVID went totally virtual, I was on the advisory committee that was formed by the then accessibility advisor for the DNCC. And so I was familiar with what kind of happens with a convention just from that exposure. And so when we found that it was going to be coming here to Chicago, you know, it was kind of piqued my interest in regards to, okay, are there opportunities to be involved um, here in Chicago? And I, you know, know uh, Commissioner Arfa, you know, work closely with independent living centers and such. And Senator Duckworth had convened a group shortly after Chicago was determined to be the city that was chosen. She convened a disability advisory group um, across the city, just people to talk about the convention and such. And that kind of really piqued my interest also, because I got to hear more about what her vision was for the convention and such. And they hadn't advertised the position yet. They were just, I think, just kind of organizing at that time. That kind of piqued my interest. But my my experience, I've been consulting for 40 years now on these kinds of issues. I've worked with a lot of large organizations, not as big as this convention (laughs) um, in any way, shape, or form. Um, But, you know, around accessibility, inclusion, uh, making sure that your facilities are accessible, making sure that people are included from a language perspective, and more recently from uh, electronic, making sure that, you know, our electronic communications and such are accessible. So this is kind of a longstanding issue for me that's just grown with my career and with how society's changed along the way. Yeah, you sound like a perfect fit. Yeah, wow. So what kind of things have you been working on to ensure accessibility and how did you even know where to start? Well, I think one of the things was listening to delegates from previous conventions, listening to people about what was happening. I mean, I connected with the previous accessibility advisor, so I kind of knew from there. But also just listening and um, hearing from past attendees of the convention as to what they experienced as some of their challenges or the issues and such. I knew that, you know, what the convention entailed. It entails hotels. It entails big, large venues. It entails transportation. It entails programming and communication stuff. So, you know, you have that kind of outline of what's going to be happening there, but really looking at 
you know, what can we do better than what had been done in previous conventions to try to address some of the concerns that had been raised, you know, previously. And that was kind of where I started. I mean, there, there was definitely messaging that came across loud and clear related to things like, for example, making sure that everybody could sit together. You know, in previous convention, that's been a problem, that people with disabilities were segregated from their delegations because of the accessible seating. So there would be, like, designated accessible seating areas that were not integrated into where all the other delegates sat. And that was definitely not acceptable to people. Um, and so that was, you know, one of the first things, very first things <laughs> that we really tackled with the uh, the venue was, okay, how are we going to ensure that everybody can get on the floor, can get integrated seating and such? And, you know, that's resulted in a lot of changes construction-wise. Like, we're building a huge ramp. There's never been a ramp to get to the floor before. This will be the first time that we have a ramp that everybody will be using the ramp to get up and down. Everyone can use a ramp, only a few people can use the stairs, mm-hmm. right? So, Yes, that's huge. Ensuring that every one of our shuttle buses is accessible. So in the past conventions, there would be a percentage of the shuttle buses that were accessible. So if you were needing accessibility, you would have to wait for maybe the second shuttle or the third shuttle or, you know, or whatever to come along. Well, now every single shuttle bus will be accessible. So there still might be a wait because only so many people can fit on to each shuttle, but it's not the same. I mean, you will be able to get on every shuttle, you know, if there's room uh, on every shuttle. Hotels, making sure sure that the hotel stock, you know, that we're using is newer stock, you know, that it's it's it meets the criteria and things of that nature. And then, of course, because so much now is digital and so much is about how we communicate about the convention and how we get people excited about the convention and such and what the information we're putting out, making sure that that's accessible from the website to the social media, to the newsletters, to, you know, every communication that is is going out. So you kind of have to look at it like, why, what's happening? You know, what are all the pieces? And then figure out, you know, how you can intersect accessibility with those things and recognizing that accessibility touches basically every single thing that happens with the convention. From people arriving at the airport to people getting into their hotels to people to getting to the venues, then participating at the venues. And then you've got the other things that happen outside of that, which is just the city itself being accessible. People are going to be out and about in the city. So we're also concerned about, you know, people being able to access our cultural venues and being able to, you know, access our restaurants and things of that nature, too. Not just the the convention itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It sounds like you took into consideration the lived experiences from those who have attended the DNC previously and were able to use that. Yeah, definitely listening to them about what their things that were pain points for them, I guess mm-hmm. I would want to say. Yeah. 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 So what have been some of the challenges for you? I think the the biggest challenge is just getting everybody to understand accessibility. You know, we have a really great team and they are all very committed to accessibility. I mean, that's been from the very get-go. That's been the messaging. This is going to be the most accessible convention that we've had. But it's just also helping people because not everybody knows what accessibility means. It means different things to different people. Some people don't even think about certain things, you know, like they think maybe accessibility is that, well, we have a a line of chairs that we remove in the back of the room, you know, where we're having a conversation about, no, it needs to be integrated seating. Oh, we didn't think about that. Those are the kinds of things that, you know, just being there and listening to what other people are doing and then raising my hand or raising a question to um, say, hey, do we consider this? Did we consider that kind of thing? That's, I think, the the biggest challenge is trying to track all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, you mentioned that the goal was for this to be the most accessible convention that we've had. Do you know if the accessibility within the city of Chicago, you know, played a role in Chicago even being chosen as a host city? Oh, definitely. Chicago has a reputation. You know, we've had, I don't know how many mayors, I can't count back, as to how many have made a commitment to, you know, making Chicago the most accessible city in the United States. And each one of them have, at different points, done different things to advance that. So I think that has really taken us a long way. One thing that's kind of unique about Chicago compared to some other convention cities is just our footprint. We have a very condensed footprint here for where the convention's going to be. We have very accessible venues that have been used for major national other events and activities. So, you know, they have had experience working with large groups and just looking at our transportation infrastructure, you know, looking at our sidewalks and curb cuts and things of that nature, looking at our newer stock of um, hotels and buildings, you know, in the downtown area, looking at the fact that both the city, the state have accessibility codes that are at or above what federal code is, you know, that makes a big difference, right? Um, And then just the commitment that we have, look at having the mayor's office for people with disabilities. That's not something you find in every community. And just the impact that that office has had on the various 
various sectors of the community as well. So I think when you take all of those things into consideration, Chicago is highlighted as a very accessible city. And so when you look at wanting to hold your convention someplace that is going to be accessible and achieve that, Chicago is kind of a logical choice for that. That's great. Well, we're definitely happy to hear that. Yeah, that feels good to hear, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you talked about collaborating with the mayor's office for people with disabilities. So how have you worked with the city of Chicago departments and also with the disability community to prepare for this upcoming event? So I mentioned the um, fact that Senator Duckworth had convened a group back in mid-2023. I kind of used that group as kind of a base group, worked with Commissioner Arfa, worked with Karen Tamley at Access Living, et cetera, to kind of identify who were some key disability leaders in the Chicago area representing a cross-disability population that we could put together. And um, we created an advisory committee. So we have a, a disability advisory committee that is kind of focused on looking at what about the convention? That's been a, a big part. But um, interfacing with the city agencies has been critical all the way along. I sit on several committees that are here at the uh, city level that were established specifically for inner collaboration between the host committee, the DNCC, and the city. Um, so I'm working uh, closely with the Vulnerable Populations Committee. I'm working closely with the medical tent planning. I'm working closely with environmental services around things like heat exhaustion and, and how that's going to impact. I'm working closely with some of the disability mental health organizations in the city um, to look at how we can support people with mental health issues at the convention, knowing that that environment can be stressful. There's just a lot of cross collaboration. And then also looking at our infrastructure, you know, we're, we're working with CDOT, we're working with aviation, you know, what's happening at Midway and, and O'Hare. I've mean, had multiple meetings with the airports and their personnel, as well as the airlines, meeting with CTA to make sure that the services that are available to people with disabilities can be accessed by individuals who are visitors, who are from out of town, and how are they going to access those services? How do they learn about those services and such? So it's really, it touches upon everything. You know, we're worried about the curb cuts, we're worried about sidewalks, you know, all of those things that touches. I'm working with CDOT on, you know, paths of travel at McCormick Place and at United Center to make sure that people can come from public transportation. And, and, you know, we have volunteers. We have 12,000 volunteers who are going to be coming. And we know already that at least a thousand of those have identified as having a disability agreed to volunteer. Well, we know that they're going to have to get to the United Center and to McCormick Place, and they're going to be using public transportation. So we're concerned about their routes of travel and such. So just working closely with all of those organizations and entities to make sure that we have covered all of the bases that we possibly can to anticipate what might be an issue and proactively address those before the convention. And then they'll have a lasting impact. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any idea of how many people will be traveling into Chicago for the convention? Well, I think that we're expecting, yeah. um, you know, somewhere in uh, the 45,000 plus that will be here. Now, you've got different groups that are attending that represent different you know interests and things of that mm-hmm. nature but also understand that many of our folks who are, attend bring their families and friends with them so it's not just those that are actually attending the convention but you've got this huge number of people that come in support of those that are attending the convention as well so i you know the economic impact is, is pretty significant as it relates to that and we know already just from the context that we're having that a lot of people who are coming have family members with disabilities so they may not themselves be attending the convention with a disability but they have a family member who's coming with them that has a disability and is interested in accessing services here in Chicago. You know, may not be attending the convention, but will be going to our museums and will be going to our theaters and, you know, and our lakefront and, and things of that nature, too. So, yeah, so we're, we're talking a really significant yeah. number of people will be here for that, you know, convention period. And we know that there's two main locations of the convention at the United Center and then McCormick. Can you tell us like the difference between what will be happening at those two different sure. places? Sure. So McCormick Place will be using McCormick Center West building, which is the newest building at McCormick Center. That is where the Democratic National Committee business take place, the caucus meetings take place. So you've got the Disability Caucus, you've got the Women's Caucus, you've got the Black Caucus, you've got Climate Caucus, you've got all different kinds of caucus meetings will um, take place at that 
venue. Then we also have the DNCC is sponsoring a large expo in collaboration with the um, local host committee. So there will be a very large expo that will be vendors and such of that nature that will also be um, at McCormick Place as well. That is the only venue that is open to the public. The public, there will be instructions coming out from the DNC as to how the public can attend those events and things of that nature. So that's the McCormick Place. And that pretty much is daytime activity. Mm. That's you know, pretty much the business of the party you know, in, in that regard with the caucuses and such. Then we would switch over at night to the convention itself, which will occur at United Center. Now, that is a very controlled environment in regards to who can attend. You have to be invited. You have to be credentialed in order to be able to attend the convention. So you have your delegates, which is over 5,500 delegates that represent all of your states and your territories of the United States who will actually do the formal nominating of the president. But then you also have many different special interest groups that attend. You have donors that attend. You have political allies and and such that attend. And then we have, I think, about 15,000 press. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's representing all sectors, you know, of the press. You know, we have digital creators. We've got, you know, your mainstream press as well, um, you know, print press as well as, you know, online. It's very, very diverse in that regard. So, yeah, it's a huge, huge population. Very mixed. Very diverse. Yeah. yeah. So you have mentioned the DNC and then the DNC committee, which is separate. Mm-hmm. And so how many organizations really have been working together to organize this event? There are three core There would be the host committee, which is the nonpartisan local committee that is responsible for fundraising and organization and such within the city neighborhoods and and recruitment of volunteers and and, um, things of, of that nature. And then you have the DNCC, which is the convention committee, again, nonpartisan, that is responsible for putting on the convention itself. And then you have the DNC, which is the partisan Democratic National Committee. So there's the three main groups that work very closely in concert. Right, right. All having different functions. Yeah. Wow. Well, we know that the DNC is coming up. We're interested in hearing what you're most excited about. I'm more excited about seeing it all come together. You know, mm-hmm. um, when you plan something and you see something on paper, you know, or you see something conceptually, you know, and you think about it, and we have such plans that, you know, again, wanting to make it more accessible than it's been in the past. I'm just excited to see all of those pieces, you know, come together because it's been five months of work so far to get all of this in, in place. I'm excited to see people come and be excited about the convention. I think the energy um, that, you know, a convention brings to the um, party and, and to the activities, I think, is, you know, by itself exciting. Just the number of people and the diversity of the people that will be there, you know, from all walks of life, you know, socioeconomic, mm-hmm. race, gender. It, it just is, I think, an exciting time here in Chicago just to see the city highlighted so much because there will be so many things that happen. It's not just going to happen at United Center and at McCormick Place. I mean, there are things happening all over the city. You know, there's parties and events, you know, being sponsored by groups all over the city. So the city is going to be very much alive. Mm-hmm. We're very focused on the accessibility of that and making sure that those events are accessible too. Special interest groups are going to have their own parties and events. You know, we've been talking to them to make sure, hey, make sure that your events are accessible for those that would be attending, you know, that have disabilities and such as well. So, you know, really, again, trying to make sure that um, everybody has a good, positive experience when they come here to Chicago for the convention, no matter how they touch the convention. Mm. Do you get to go to the part at the United Center? I will definitely be there. I have obviously some key coordination responsibilities. Uh I have many wheels to keep turning (laughs) while I'm there. So yeah, I I probably will not know where I am from one moment (laughs) to the next, and it will be pretty much 24-7 starting on Saturday the 17th uh, through Friday the 23rd. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're going to definitely deserve a vacation. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I think we're all thinking about what is post-convention, right? What does that look like (laughs) for all of us? Yes. (laughs) Well, one thing we like to ask our guests as we wrap up is, what would you tell someone who's interested in going into occupational therapy? We know that's your your background, and it's clear that you've done a lot of different things with that degree. Mm -hmm. But with this really being focused on careers and promoting different types of careers within our city, just interested in any advice you'd give someone? Sure. I mean, I, you know, I've always um, thought of my background and my degree as kind of like my birth certificate. It gave me my foundation. It, it taught me some of the basics that I needed, you know, but it didn't dictate what I did going forward. I used what I learned 
And that's why I always tell people, I say, capitalize on what you've learned. Don't get focused on a title. Don't get focused on a job category or something that you're, think about what you've learned. Think about the skills that you've gained and how you can transfer those skills to other kinds of opportunities and such of that. Don't get hung up on, you know, uh, my degrees and such, and so I only can work as, as this or whatever. But really think about how those skills can be transferable across so many different things mm-hmm. and also continue to learn. Don't stop. If you have a passion about something, go for it. Don't let um, others tell you that you can't do something. If you really want to do it, pursue it. You know, find a, an avenue to be able to um, pursue that. Maybe it's not going to work out for you the first time. Maybe you have to start at the bottom. I've started at the bottom many times and I had to work myself up. You can't always be at the top. I really tell people, get in, get your feet wet, you know. And the other thing I also say is that be part of the solution, not part of the problem. So, you know, don't sit back and complain because you're able to do something or you're able to find a job or, you know, whatever. Be out there and try to be part of that solution. Try to figure out how can you network, you know, with people. How can you make your ear known? How can you show your skills, whether it's even volunteering, mm-hmm. you know, something of that nature, and just get those skills that you need um, and that background you need to build that resume, whether it's paid or not paid. And then, you know, take a chance. Just take a chance and uh, put yourself out there. Yeah, that's great advice. Yeah, definitely. I think I still benefit from that in my career. So yes, thanks for sharing. For sure. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for being with us today and sharing all your knowledge and um, you know all the great work you're doing. We're excited to see how accessible and just how the DNC you know works out. And we know that the city of Chicago has done a lot of work to you know support the DNC as well. And thank you for just being with us. Well, thank you very time. much. I appreciate the opportunity. Of course. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of All Access. Be sure to follow us on social media at MOPD Chicago. Special thanks to our executive producer, Commissioner Rachel Arfa, the City of Chicago production team, our special guest, and our American Sign Language interpreters who helped make this podcast accessible. See you next time.